Australemia and Pregnancy, a Q&A with Dr. Gina Lundberg. This is part of a series to help individuals with FH manage the disorder over the course of their lifetime with the goal to prevent heart disease. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kat Davis Ahmed, Vice President for Policy and Outreach at the FH Foundation. I have FH myself and I have two beautiful girls, so I'm very interested in this subject myself. And we're so happy to have Dr. Gina Lundberg and Christy Garrett with us today to answer questions and talk about what women with FH need to know when planning a pregnancy. Dr. Lundberg is the clinical director of the Emory Women's Heart Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Hello, Dr. Lundberg, and we're honored to have you. Hello, Kat. And Christy Garrett is a volunteer FH advocate for awareness with the FH Foundation and a mother of four living with FH in the Atlanta area. Hi, Christy. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, Kat. Thanks for having me. So Christy will be asking questions we've gathered from women living with FH, and Dr. Lundberg will be sharing her FH expertise with us to help us all get some answers. I think one thing we know is that we don't have all the answers we'd like and more research is needed on women with FH, particularly regarding questions of family planning and treatment. And we will have some information with, for you at the end about ongoing studies in women with high cholesterol. So Christy, why don't you take it from, from here? Okay, thank you, Kat. Hello, Dr. Lundberg. To start today, can you talk briefly about what familial hypercholesterolemia is? and why FH diagnosis matters. Well, thank you, Christy, and sure. There are three reasons that the diagnosis of FH matters. First of all, FH is different. Familial hypercholesterolemia, or what we call FH for short, is a genetic disorder passed down in families, and it affects approximately one in 250 people, and it causes very high LDL or what's known as the bad cholesterol, and because it's genetic, it's there from birth. Lots of people have high cholesterol, but this is what makes FH different. FH is entirely genetic, and the cholesterol levels are extremely high, two, three, even four times higher than they are in other people. And unfortunately, life, uh, FH is life-threatening. It's a lifetime exposure to these very high levels of LDL cholesterol that can lead to premature or early heart disease. And people with FH are at a much higher risk for having a heart attack, needing coronary artery stents or coronary artery bypass surgery, and from even dying very young from heart disease. But the good news is that FH is manageable. We have very effective treatments to lower the cholesterol in people with FH and lower the risk of heart disease. But early diagnosis is essential, and then lifelong management of FH is essential for preventing or delaying heart disease. Unfortunately, it goes undiagnosed way too often. 90% of the people who have FH have not yet been diagnosed. And this is something that we hope to change in the medical community and especially the FH Foundation. Absolutely. I was aware that high cholesterol was a genetic condition, but I wasn't aware that it had an actual name, FH, familial hypercholesterolemia, until 2009 when I was 37 years old after I had my four children and after I had three stents placed. I sure wish I had known sooner. So if a person has a family history of early heart disease and very high cholesterol, the LDL is really the problem and they should be asked to be evaluated for FH. And this may require being referred to a cardiologist or a special lipidologist who treats FH. And the FH Foundation can help with that. I hope people can hear this and learn from it. My untreated total cholesterol was over 400, and my LDL cholesterol was over 350. And I do have that family history of heart disease, but it wasn't until I found you after my heart event that I was diagnosed with FH, and thank goodness I have been diagnosed. 
Now we've had our three children screened, our four children screened, excuse me, and three of our four children have inherited the gene from me. So I'm just so thankful that we have found out about this gene and can take further action with their high cholesterol. So Dr. Lundberg, in speaking with you today, I sure hope you can tell me some good news for my children's sake and my own. Absolutely, Christy. As I said, FH is a winnable battle. It's very manageable, but it's a lifelong management. If a person starts treatment young enough and lower their LDL cholesterol, we can almost normalize the risk for heart disease, and that's great news. FH management in women is different from men because while women are in their childbearing years and planning to have a pregnancy, we need to stop the medication. And it's while they're off the medication that is so important. So if we can pick up young girls and young women and get them on treatment early, they will have those benefits that will carry over during the time period that they are off for pregnancy. So in women, it's even more important to find FH while they're young. Great. So today we're going to talk about a lifelong management that will include the wonderful faith that we women are, build, are, are building when we consider how extending our families. Dr. Lumberg, what do women with FH really need to know? Well, most women with FH can have healthy pregnancies and healthy children. But for women who already have heart disease, it's very important to discuss having children with them because for different types of heart disease, it is considered very high risk, and generally we don't advise it. When a woman wants to have a pregnancy with heart disease, it's very important to coordinate the care between her uh, obstetrician, the cardiologist, and her whole health care team. But women with FH should plan for a lifetime of management. And we have to talk about what we're going to do when they're young, preconception, during the pregnancy, during the labor and delivery and the birth, and even during breastfeeding. Most women have a plan for how they want to uh, have the baby and have their breastfeeding and how long they want it to continue, but it's really important to be discussing that with your lipid specialist as well as your obstetrician and gynecologist. That's great to know. I have, as I just said, four beautiful children and three of which are daughters, and I wouldn't for the world change having them but with the knowledge that one of my one of my daughters does have FH for sure, I'm concerned for their for her health and any possible pregnancies that she may have in the future. How long do women need to be off their medication before trying to conceive? So ideally, when a woman decides she wants to start having uh, children, uh, she's off the statin for at least three months before she conceives. So you would stop the medication, continue birth control for three months, and then you can stop birth control. Uh, women who become pregnant while they're taking a, a statin or another drug that's absorbed into their bloodstream, what we call systemically absorbed lipid modifying agents, they should be stopped immediately. And you need to contract, contact your obstetrician to discuss, um, is the baby going to be okay? What is your fetal assessment? Women who have fertility treatments to try to get pregnant also need to be very closely followed by their lipid specialist, their cardiologist, uh, and their uh, obstetrician and gynecologist because many of these medications will increase their cholesterol levels. What medications should not be used then during pregnancy? Well, FH? well, statins are our, our most effective treatment, and unfortunately, they are not to be taken during pregnancy, what we call contraindicated during pregnancy. There are other medications um, such as azetamib, uh, niacin, and phenofibrate, and they're uh, also associated with problems to the fetus or what we call teratogenicity, and so they are not recommended during pregnancy. It's very important during pregnancy to have a very healthy lifestyle and a very healthy eating plan, and whatever level the woman's been exercising prior to pregnancy, she can continue during her pregnancy, uh, but we don't recommend trying to suddenly get very physically fit during your pregnancy if you haven't been doing that beforehand. Okay, well, are there any other treatment options during pregnancy 
pertaining to the FH and what most women actually take or do while they're pregnant. The only medication that we believe is acceptable during pregnancy is what we call a bile acid sequestrant. Um, these are medications, generally uh, a powder that's mixed in a drink um, that you drink every day, and they stay in the gut. You drink them, they go through your gastrointestinal system, and then they go out the toilet. So they're never absorbed into your bloodstream, so they can't affect uh, the baby. And so these are the only ones that are safe. For a woman who has homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, uh, or the very severe form, um, there's only LDL apheresis. And this is a special um, cleaning or filtering of the blood that can only be done in certain centers. This is not really commonly done. But if a woman is uh, homozygous with FH or has severe FH, that would be one of the options in her plan for pregnancy. Um, uh, Mipamersin can be considered during pregnancy for all, also for a woman with homozygous FH or the most severe form. And the new medications that are, are so uh, exciting and have been so um, good for patients with FH, what we call the PCSK9 inhibitors, uh, these are injections, they have not been evaluated during pregnancy or breastfeeding. So we don't really have safety data on them. But again, it's so important for a woman to follow her low cholesterol, plant-based, low-fat diet, and a healthy lifestyle with good exercise throughout her pregnancy. Okay, getting back to the bile acid sequestrant, I actually take that myself, and I know what a big pill that is. Do you have any advice on how to swallow this big pill of taking <laughs> this medication? Well, Christy, it's fine to cut those medications in half. Um, just like the prenatal vitamins can feel like a horse pill, uh, these medications can be cut in half. And as I said, there is a powdered version that you can drink, and it's a lot easier. Um, yes, it doesn't taste very well, but it is manageable. Um, what happens to the cholesterol level during pregnancy? Well, in a normal pregnancy, cholesterol levels get higher in all women, not just women with FH. And that's because basically you're building a baby. So cholesterol is what makes all the cell walls, creates all the new cells. And so if you're going to make a baby, you need a lot of cholesterol. So a normal cholesterol level will go up by 25 to 50% during a pregnancy. And the LDL can go up to as much as 66%. Also, the triglycerides, another form of fat in the blood, can increase two to four times from what you were before pregnancy. And this is what's happening in all women. So, of course, with a woman with FH, her cholesterol levels are getting even higher. Usually, after pregnancy and after breastfeeding, the cholesterol levels will come back down to where they were prior to the pregnancy. More research is needed to understand the effects of cholesterol during pregnancy for the mother and baby, especially in women with FH. Well, can you explain more to me what the, what the risks are for women with FH and the risk to the baby during the pregnancy? I had four normal pregnancies, but my last pregnancy, um, I developed hypertension and was on bed rest. Could that have been associated with my FH? Well, we are looking into studies about preeclampsia and preterm delivery and other complications of pregnancy and their association with high cholesterol. Preeclampsia is common in very young women, but also in older women, and it's common when you've had multiple pregnancies. Preeclampsia is high blood pressure, but it includes other things that are very detrimental to the woman as well as the child. So these are very important things to follow. There has been one study specifically in women with FH that shows no association between preeclampsia or preterm delivery with FH. Preeclampsia is actually fairly common and it affects 3.4% of all pregnancies in the United States. So that's really about one in 29 pregnancies. So as a cardiologist, I frequently see women who've had preeclampsia during their pregnancy. And of interest, um, after their pregnancy, they have a lifelong increased risk of heart disease after that. So it's really something we need to know more about. Okay. Well, a woman that has FH that is 
considering pregnancy. Will she automatically be a high-risk pregnancy, or was she okay to go under the care of a normal physician? Well, what com what qualifies as a high-risk pregnancy is multiple things. One, just a woman over 35 is considered high-risk or advanced maternal age. That's a horrible thing to call a woman, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> But it can be a, pre a previous problem with a pregnancy, such as eclampsia or preeclampsia. It can also be certain types of heart problems, particularly valve problems. So as of now, FH is not considered a high-risk pregnancy from the obstetrician standpoint, but it is much better if this pregnancy is followed with a cardiologist or a lipid specialist as part of her health care team. Okay. Well, how long can women with FH breastfeed? Is there a certain amount of time? or? Well, the decision to breastfeed is actually very personal. Um, every woman I talk to has an idea of how she wants her pregnancy to go and how long she hopes to breastfeed. And, of course, there are many factors that contribute to that, how well the baby latches on, your production of breast milk, um, certain illnesses that might require you know, an antibiotic or whatever. That's always going to affect how long a woman can actually breastfeed. But what's so important is while a woman's breastfeeding, she can only be on the bile acid sequestrant. And so her lipid reduction isn't going to be maximized with a statin or a medication that we would use if she was not pregnant. So for the time that she breastfeeds, we recommend that she remain only on the bile acid sequestrant. But I think this is really important to discuss with your physician prior to the pregnancy so that the expectation and what the woman hopes to have for the pregnancy um, is honored and respected, and we make every effort to help the woman have the pregnancy she wants to have. Right. After a woman has a baby, how soon should she check her blood levels? So as I said, while she's breastfeeding, the cholesterol levels will, be, will remain high. So I usually don't check them while the woman is breastfeeding unless we just really need to know how high it is. And then about four weeks after she's finished breastfeeding, I like to go ahead and check it and see if she's getting back to normal. Okay. Well, then Can I jump in with one question, Dr. Lundberg? What, sure. what would you say most, thank you. What would you say, it's Kat here, what would you say most women do in terms of medication management during pregnancy if they have FH? What's, what's most common? What do you see? Most women are on the bile acid sequestrant, and the one I'm very comfortable with is the cholestyramine. And they can have up to um, two packets a day, and we just work on healthy lifestyle and diet and exercise and plan to get back to uh, a stronger treatment as soon as the pregnancy and breastfeeding um, are done. Thank you. All right. Well, Dr. Lundberg, what do women really need to know after they've had a baby, and especially how does FH affect their family? Well, as we said, Christy, FH runs in families, so it's not just a personal problem. It's a whole family problem. And for every person who carries one gene of FH, or what we call the heterozygous carrier, there's a 50% chance that the children will inherit it as well. Um, FH is by far the most common genetically um, inherited disorder, and like I said, one in 250 patients is very, very common in a cardiology practice. Um, at Emory, we take care of hundreds of patients with FH. So here is an example of how FH runs in a family. This is what we call uh, a family uh, history or a family diagram, and it's used in our cascade screening. The men are squares and the women are circles. And so a man that is a white square or clear does not carry an FH gene. If it's half red, that's a man who carries one gene for FH or what we call a heterozygous FH male. But if the square is completely red, that means he carries two genes for FH, or he's a homozygous FH carrier. These are the people with the most severe form of FH, and it's much, much more rare to be a homozygous carrier. The woman is the circle, and so a woman that has no red, a clear woman, does not carry the FH gene. 
uh, a circle that's half red carries one copy of FH gene. And again, a fully red circle, that is the one that carries two copies or the homozygous FH carrier. So we can see from our diagram that a woman and a man who were both heterozygous or both carried one copy of the FH gene had children and they had four children. So does the statistic suggest that one child will not carry any FH gene, 50% or two of the children will carry one gene, but 25% or one child will have both genes, and that's the homozygous uh, male who, uh, in this scenario, is a father. He and another woman have children together, and because he has two copies, and so every child of his will get one copy, all of his offspring, his son and his daughter, both carry one copy of FH. But this man's sibling, uh, the aunt, in the diagram who has children with another male because she carries one copy of the FH gene. She only has a 50-50 chance of giving it to each child and in this diagram their child has one copy of FH as well. So this is a family tree diagram and it shows how FH runs throughout the family. So family screening can help prevent heart disease, and FH being inherited is very important to talk to your doctor about your family history, particularly when it affects people in your family young and when high cholesterol runs in your family. Before having children, both parents should understand if they carry the FH gene or have FH, and if both parents have a FH, there's a 25% that their children will have homozygous FH, the most severe form, and each child of a person with heterozygous FH has a 50% chance of having it as well, and each child of a parent with FH should have their cholesterol checked by age two, age three at the latest, because again, it's very important to pick these people up early and start treatment early so we prevent heart disease and reduce their risk of having heart disease back to the normal population. So FH is not a reason to not have children. In fact, just like Christy has got a beautiful family of four, most of my FH patients do choose to have children. Um, remember, it's early diagnosis and cholesterol treatment of the LDL that can be managed. It is a manageable disease and we can help normalize the risk of heart disease for families with FH. I couldn't agree more. I would have never considered not having my children. They are my biggest blessing and my greatest joy. Um, and I hope to spread this awareness and bring more people into the fold of the FH Foundation. Dr. Lumberg, do you have anything else to add to this conversation today? Again, Christy, I just think that this type of program and what the FH Foundation is doing for awareness is so important. We must screen children young. We must identify people who have FH and get treatment started earlier. The earlier, the better in women so that when they decide to have children, we can stop treatment for a while, go to a less effective treatment, and then after they've had children and, and have finished breastfeeding, get back to the treatment. If you don't have, know you have FH, you can't manage it. And so awareness is really the key. It's totally the key. Thank you so much, Dr. Lundberg, for your time today and for all that you do for your patients. A lot of us wouldn't be here without you. I have learned so much from our conversation and wish that I had had this information before I had my own baby. But I'm so thankful to have it now, knowing that I have my daughters to consider and possible grandchildren coming in the future. Of course, as you said, we still need more research on women, on FH and FH in pregnancy. Now, Kat, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Lundberg, and thank you, Christy. That was really fantastic. Um, and as you said, there is more research needed. That's part of what we're doing at the FH Foundation is, um, is contributing to the research on FH for, for everybody, men and women, adults and children. 
there is specifically research being done by Mother to Baby, a nonprofit organization we wanted to share with you. They offer information about medications during pregnancy and breastfeeding. They're doing two studies looking at women with high cholesterol who are pregnant and women who are taking a PCSK9 inhibitor and become pregnant. And so the FH Foundation is working with them to make sure that women with FH know about these studies. I'm always grateful to people who participate in research studies because it helps us to learn what we need to know for the future to do better in the future. So anybody who's interested in joining this study or learning more can visit the Mother to Baby website. I also want to share that I hope some will consider joining the FH Foundation's Cascade FH Registry through the patient portal, which can be found on our website. And that's whether you're pregnant or not, that's for anybody with FH. This study is conducted by the FH Foundation to help us understand the current state of diagnosis and care so that we can do better in the future. And it's also a great resource for all of us where you can build your family tree and track your own health information over time. So if you're interested in learning more, you can visit the FH Foundation's website and just click on the Cascade FH Registry button. I would really like to thank you both. Thank you, Christy, so much for uh, guiding us through these questions from the community today. It's been really wonderful and to hear from your personal experience as well. And I'd like to thank Dr. Lundberg and her colleagues at Emory University and Emory Women's Heart Center for the wonderful work they did putting this presentation together and for much of the research that it's based on. So big thanks go out certainly to Dr. Lundberg and to Dr. Sperling at Emory University, Dr. Danny Epen, and Dr. Pratik Sandasara. For more information, you can visit the FH Foundation's website. We have more information on FH and pregnancy there. And to connect with others who are living with FH, you can join the FH Foundation's Facebook discussion group. It's a closed discussion group where you can meet other people with FH. I'd also like to take a, a moment to thank the sponsors of the FH Advocates for Awareness Program for their generous support. We really appreciate it and makes help, help to make this work possible. If you're watching this webinar and you have more questions, please send them to us at the FH Foundation. The email address is info at the FHfoundation.org and that will help inform future webinars and we can certainly get back to you directly with answers to your questions. So thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Lundberg. Thank you, Christy. We really appreciate it. And we hope thank to you. see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Kat.